Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Happy Fourth of July. Okay. Um, I'm 90 years old, so I don't talk quickly, so I hope I don't bore you to death. Um, but anyway, they wanted to tell me how the Jin family came to Tucson. So uh, I'll begin. Closer to your mouth. Okay. Um, the Jin family starts in the village of Ahongji in Canton in China, and, um, and, and Jin Su Dung immigrated from his village to the U.S. in 1907 and was admitted in 1908. He made his way to Tucson because people from his village had settled after working on the railroad and he found work as a cook and went to school through third grade. He had to return to China to find a bride and he wed Li Bag Kam, my mother-in-law, in an arranged marriage on June 27, 1917. And they, had it to, they headed to Arizona seven months later but then she was pregnant and initially denied entrance into the U.S. And she, and she was kept on Angel Island for 10 days and uh, isolated and speaking little English. She wrote to her husband expressing her loneliness and lack of food. A friend finally testified that she witnessed the marriage and the couple living together in their village. Once cleared, the couple traveled by train to Arizona where they lived for a time in a tent city in, outside of Yuma. Can you imagine how hot that was? The first barn, Margaret, died in that tent city likely a victim of a flu outbreak. They eventually made their way to Tucson where the couple lived in a shed owned by their cousin who ran a store on the site. The couple worked hard and several years later saved enough to buy out the cousin and bought the store. They built a two-story home adjoining the store and the Jin Su Dung grocery store and meat market opened in 1923. During this time, the Jins continued building their family as well, with Betty, George, William, Alice, and Harry all born at home. Uh -huh. In those days, Chinese often opened restaurants or neighborhood grocery stores and their market became a neighborhood hub frequent, frequented by the different mix of the community, Hispanics, Asians, and other ethnicities. And the, the, the older gins learned English and even some Spanish to communicate with their customers and neighbors. The market offered a variety of goods, fresh cut meat, ice, candy, snow cones, cigarettes, beer, wine, cereal, and produce, in, in, including the uh, Chinese favorites like the winter melons that are so huge. And, uh, and during the 1930s Great Depression, Jin Su Dung and other markets carried many neighborhood families until they could pay it back. In the meantime, the family focused on raising well-rounded children. Each was expected to help out the store after school and on weekends. But music and especially education, they were emphasized. Like Amer many American families, they had a piano in the living room and every child was expected to learn to play an instrument. Betty on piano 
Alice, violin and piano, and bra brass instruments for the boys. George on trombone, Willie euphonium, and Harry the coronet. The boys especially enjoyed playing sports with their neighborhood friends. Sadly, George died at age 16 from rheumatic fever. In World War II, Willie and Harry graduated from Tucson High and enlisted, where are we? Enlisted in the Army. In the Army and Army Air Corps. Joining the U.S. military was important to the Chinese living in America as a de demonstration of commitment to their country. About 20% of Chinese Americans served during World War II. Willie served in the European theater and received a Purple Heart for injuries when the, his jeep hit a landmine and he was carrying one of the generals who got killed. Harry was stationed in the Philippines with the Army Air Corps. He, he, uh, he applied to be uh, trained as a pilot, but the war was ending, so they stopped training uh, pilots, so he was disappointed. There was a training center in Marana, not too far from where we are today, and, the gen and many were Chinese cadets training in Marana. And uh, the gin house pr provided them a, f uh, a home away from home on the weekends. And they would, along with the, the parents and daughters, Betty and Alice, would provide food and, and, and musical entertainment. And they made many friends there. Um, this was one of many demonstrations of the Tucson Sino American community support for the war effort. Recently, the Chinese American Tucsonians who served during World War II were honored with the Congressional Gold Medal, including Willie, Harry, and my brother Lincoln. With the end of the war, the Jim family was reunited and resumed in Tucson, and Harry returned to his studies. Willie took over running the Jin Sudang Market follow, following the death of their father in 1951. He later married Marion Wong and adopted her daughter, Amber, who's here today. Raise your hand, Amber. <laughs> She's one of our prettier girls in the family. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, together the trio kept the market vibrant and humming for the community. For Willie, the friendships from his youth endured for a lifetime, as did his avid support of U of A athletes. How many are U of A uh, supporters of uh, sports? Way. Anyway, um, Alice graduated from the U of A and taught second grade at Borton Elementary near the house on 22nd Street. She was offered the role of principal for the school, but she chose to marry my brother Lincoln instead. <laughs> Uh, she didn't want the responsibility, I'm sure. And uh, Lincoln be later became the Associate Dean of the U of A College of Pharmacy and co-founder of the first Poison Control Center for, the, for Arizona. Together, Alice and Lincoln helped many Chinese immigrants in Tucson learn English and pass their citizenship tests. So sometimes I run into them and, and they remember their kindness. Harry proposed to me at, their, at um, Alice and Lincoln's wedding and we married the following year. By this time he had received his bachelor's 
degree from U of A and his law degree from Harvard. Family remained close even as we all started family. dedicated caregivers and even doctors. Many of them are parents themselves. My eldest daughter, Susan, will now expand our whole family, has influenced their success. Good job. Good job. I hope I didn't bore you. Oh, what was passed down to us, I guess, from, from the family, starting with Granny way back when. But I remember having really good role models throughout the family, and of course, most of them were relatives. Mom got her degree from Berkeley and was an ele elementary school teacher before um, giving that up to raise us for brats. Um, but Mom really laid the foundation for us in terms of socialization. She also enthusiastically supported us in our unique interests, which included drumming, <laughs> gymnastics, butterflies, seashells, digging for dinosaurs, and pyrotechnics. Our family actually did have quite a few um, educators, including my Aunt Alice, and saw pictures of her who was a teacher, and my mom's brother, my uncle, Uncle Lincoln Chin, who was an associate dean, who became the associate dean of the U of A College of Pharmacy and Toxicology. I remember spending a lot of weekends up on Mount Lemon, um, and I'd wander around the woods with Uncle Lincoln and look for poisonous um, mushrooms and plants so that he could study them and add to his death.
had ever told us to like, you should go to medical school, you should go to law school, engineering, whatever. But they wanted us to find something that we were passionate about and go for. Later on in our professions, Dad really was more of, continued as a, as a mentor, I guess. I remember calling him one time complaining that I was like working 100 hours a week um, during my residency and he only said to me, welcome to the NFL. <laughs> Anyway, but Dad also, you know, like, like, like Randy before him, um, saw education as a path to us realizing our dreams. I also wanted to mention how much Dad loved Tucson. He really lived here his entire life, except for when he was in the Philippines or at Harvard Law. And uh, he, you know, this was definitely home to him. So anyway, but thank you for listening and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Oh, Mom. Mom has to finish a third of them. I'm not with the program here, sorry. Oh. Jin Su Dung and Lee Bang Camp came to this country for very little at a time when Chinese Americans were not always welcome by being by focusing on being a part of the community through their store. They lived to see society embrace them and their family. Though a widow for 30 years before her death in 82, Lee Back Camp continued to focus on helping her children achieve success in America by emphasizing education and community connectedness, professionally as well as through music, sports, and other activities, while still celebrating their proud proud Chinese roots. Thank you for inviting us to share the story of our family. Thank you. Maybe, thank you for the Jin family.